The rule in copyright is that copyright only protects original works. This applies only to part 3 works, not part 4 subject matter. Original does not mean that the work has to be particularly novel or inventive. Instead, what original means in copyright is that the work originated from the author. The author created the work, they did not just copy it from somebody else. Most of our case law dealing with originality has involved compilations or databases, a subset of literary works. This is because compilations and databases will often include content or data that is pure information. The originality claimed in compilations is the degree of skill and labour involved in collecting, selecting and ordering the information. Where copyright is granted over a database or compilation though, there is a serious risk that copyright will end up granting exclusivity over the information itself, not just the way the information is selected and arranged. Pure information is not capable of copyright protection because it should be free for all the world to use. This has significant overlap with the idea expression distinction and I suggest that you watch that related video as well. The problem with distinguishing between protecting information and protecting the way information is arranged was really epitomised in the desktop marketing and Telstra case, a full federal court decision in 2002. The court held that copyright subsisted in Telstra's white pages and yellow pages, and that the defendant had infringed copyright by making CD-ROM versions of the telephone directories. The court held that the yellow and white pages were original because Telstra had devoted substantial labour and expense in creating them. This is the so-called sweat of the brow approach. The court held that the white and yellow pages were original despite the fact that they were simply alphabetized listings of the names, addresses and phone numbers of people and businesses and that the most logical way to order such information is alphabetically. This meant that for many years, the standard of originality in Australia was extremely low and was in direct contrast to the position in the United States, where in a very similar case, Feist Publications and Rural Telephone Co., the US Supreme Court had held that telephone directories were not original enough to attract copyright protection. In 2009, the High Court decided the ICE TV and Nine Network case, which considered whether ICE TV had infringed Channel 9's TV programming schedules. These schedules comprised of a chronological list of television programs and the times they were on at, and a brief description of those programs. ICE TV had conceded that copyright subsisted in the TV schedules, so the High Court only had to determine infringement. They therefore did not have to directly consider originality. Despite this, Justices Gummo, Hain and Hayden made statements in Obita that desktop marketing may be out of line with the understanding of copyright law developed over many years and that there is a need to treat with caution the emphasis in desktop marketing on labour and expense for originality. The High Court held that originality is relevant to the test for infringement, specifically whether the defendant copied a substantial part of the plaintiff's work. They considered that the Channel 9 TV schedules contain both information, being the name and time of the TV programs, and creative material, the descriptions of the programs. The judges also held that the chronological arrangement of the information lacked almost any originality. Chief Justice French and Justices Crennan and Kiefel called the chronological arrangement obvious and prosaic. In this case, ICE TV had copied primarily title and time information for their own TV guides and had written most of their own descriptions of the programs. The High Court held that they had not copied a substantial part and so had not infringed copyright. The Court's basic determination was that the less original a work is, the more the defendant will need to take before they have copied a substantial part. This is to preserve the balance between granting copyright protection and ensuring a robust public domain of information. 
The following year, in 2010, the question of whether Telstra had copyright in its phone directories again came before the federal court in the Telstra Corp and Phone Directories case. Justice Gordon focused on the centrality of authors to copyright. She outlined that the purpose of copyright law is to protect the independent creations of authors, and she emphasized that our concept of originality is that a work originates from an author. Therefore, there must be an author of a work, and that author must exercise independent intellectual effort, otherwise there is no originality. The problem for Telstra was that they could not identify the authors of the white and yellow pages. Much of their process for arranging data was automated. There were many people that had entered data into the system, but not all of these people had been Telstra employees. Some were independent contractors. Further, these people had not exercised independent intellectual effort, they had merely entered data. Consequently, Justice Gordon concluded that there were no identifiable authors here, no originality, and no copyright in Telstra's yellow and white pages. So following the ICE TV case and the Telstra and Phone Directories case, our standard of originality is now much higher than it was before under desktop marketing. Those are the database cases in our jurisdiction, but it's worth mentioning briefly that some jurisdictions overseas have specific protections for databases and compilations. In the EU, for example, there is a sui generis regime for protecting databases which is outside of copyright law. And finally, the requirement that there is an author means that there will not be copyright protection for computer-generated works where there is no human input or interaction. This is different from a work created by a human being using a computer or a machine. Rather, it applies to things like satellite images and weather, space or environmental data that is automatically captured, downloaded and collated without human intervention. There will usually be no identifiable author for these works and thus no copyright protection.